Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water tutorial. In the vise, you see a flat back hopper. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, and as you can see, it's a still water and wet fly hook. It's a medium wire gauge in black nickel. Now I'm using the, uh, the wet fly hook for this dry fly because uh, I'm using it on the still waters, the big still waters. And for that, I mostly fish with a seven weight rod and I want to have the strength in the hook so that the fish don't bend me out on the take. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas. It's the E01, it's at 8 and as you can see, it's a black thread. So first thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of wax onto my thread. And cast on just behind the eye. I'm going to bring the thread all the way up to where a barb would be on the hook. And I'm going to stop it just before that so I can take away my excess thread. Now the ribbing I'm going to be using today for this fly is from Troutline and this ribbing is UV fibre and as you can see it's a hot orange colour. Now I've already got a little bit that I've been working with here and the first thing I'm going to do is use my thumbnail just to flatten out the end. And that will help keep bulk down from the body. And I'm just going to capture that in on my side. Once it's tied in, I can come all the way back to the butt of the fly. Now, if I was of a mind to, I could put a little hot spot in here. And I often do that with my hoppers. Uh, red or green, hot orange. Just as a little target spot. But I'm not going to do that on this occasion today. Now, before I go on, I want to give my thread a little coat with this. It's Venyard's Premium Tacky Wax. Now it's a little bit different from the hard wax I use on my thread in that it's, it's very soft and very sticky. And the reason I'm giving it a little layer of this is because the body material I'm going to use today is uh, Seals Fur. And this one's from Cook's Hill Fly Time and as you can see it's a black claret. Now seals fur is um, pretty difficult to dub with, it's quite a coarse fibre, highly buoyant but nonetheless difficult to work with so I like to take off a little bit at a time. With the tacky wax it makes your life a little bit easier when you're dubbing this on. The seals fur is more likely to, to bend to your will with a bit of this on. As you can see, the reason it's so effective is it traps lots of air between its fibres and uh, that helps it float. So once you've got your dubbing dubbed on, and I've dubbed on fairly, fairly hard, you want to come up your body. And what I'm going to do is come back to work in a little taper into the body. So I get a kind of cigar shape. So fairly happy with that. It's looking good, don't worry about all the fibres. Then the rib, the first turn comes over the shank of the hook. So I've got a turn in right at the back of the hook and then the rest is normal turns like you would do with a wire rib. Bring that all the way up to meet your thread. Then you can lock that over a couple of turns and then a couple of turns in front. Come with your snips and take away your waist end of the rib. I like these fibres. They, they, um, they come in very different colours and you'll probably see me using them in the future. They're, they're really um, interesting ribbon materials. Okay, next then we're going to add our legs. 
and I'm going to be lazy and uh, I've got these pre-knotted legs in black and I've already picked out four from the stem and just pull them away and what I'm going to do at this point is just invert my vise. Once the vise is inverted then you can come in with your hopper legs and I don't like them trailing too far behind but I want to split them into pairs and then get them either side of the bend of the hook like so and you can play about with these until you're content I'm fairly happy with that you don't need to get all precious about it capture them in, it's much easier to do when the vice is inverted if I wasn't um, doing the video I would actually just have tied them in uh, below the shank of the hook but this is best practice so th they're sitting nice now just make sure they're going where you want then I'll get my vice back around the right way okay once you've got the fly back the right way up the next thing you want to do is add in your wing and the wing we're going to be using is from again it's from Troutline it's a grey CDC tyre pack and it's a natural feather now the reason I'm using the tyre pack is uh, I, I do like the ultra selects but they are very expensive where the tyre pack you've got to do a bit of extra work grading your feathers but um, you get a lot more for your money I've already taken four out so I've got four plumes and as you can see I've lined up the tips now the CDC has a natural bend in the feather and I want that to be down on the fly so I've got them all going the same way and I've, I've just got to get the length for the wing now so you want it just beyond the bend of the hook so that looks quite good I'm going to pinch that in with my thumb and forefinger of my left hand and before I attach it just going to add a little bit of wax to give me some purchase then a couple of turns to hold it into place then check for length I'm not happy with that I think it needs to be a little bit longer so I'm going to come up try again if at first you don't succeed that's better so now I'm happy with the length I'm going to come in with two or three tight wraps lift the feather in front a couple of wraps in and then I can come in with my snips and remove my waist now some people might think that uh, four plumes is too much for a fly this size but you've got to remember that I'll be fishing this lock style more than likely uh, often in a big wind and it needs to be a float or what's the point so I've got that trapped in now now with my thread I can just tidy up that front bit and what I'm going to do next is add a little bit more of our tacky wax and just grab another little bit of the seals, seals for dubbing and dub that onto the hook dub that onto the thread, not the hook it is very early in the morning there we go that's maybe a bit too much but I can always remove what I don't need now what you want to do is get your legs your wing any other erroneous fibres out the way and dub that on just going to remove a little bit of the dubbing bring it all to the eye of the hook then to finish off I'm going to add the slightest bit of UV resin 
to my thread. And I'm going to come in with my whip finisher. Like so. Now, I've got to give the credit for this fly to uh, Gareth Dixon of the Welsh Hawks. I've seen a little picture of this uh, similar fly. It's not exactly the same, but very similar. Uh, in the fly shop's website and they've got some great patterns and this one really caught my eye so I've tied up a few of them for next month and hopefully they'll see some use so I've just cured off the uh, the head and what I want to do next is just come in with my dubbing brush and rough out some of the fibres And the job's a good one. So there's a, a flat back hopper. Don't be afraid to try it with different ribs and different colour steels for. Clara, I'm sure, will work extremely well. But it uh, looks a great little fly and I think it will sit right in the surface film. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the subscribe button. And I'll see you all next time.